60 Minutes Overtime. This week on 60 Minutes, we report on the world of offshore wind power. We traveled to a wind farm off the English coastal town of Grimsby. 60 Minutes is used to challenging shoots, but this story was unique. Marker. Our camera operator, Chris Albert, had the toughest assignment. He had to undergo helicopter crash survival training before he was able to give viewers an up-close look at the power and size of this evolving technology. When this story was being planned, producer Ashley Veely gave me a call and said to me, I've got this great story. We're going to be doing something on wind farms way out into the sea in the north of England. She said, but there's a catch. You have to do a course where you get flipped upside down and submerged in water and then you have to escape. And I looked. I was on the phone with her and I'm like, are you kidding me? So this course is called a Hewitt course. It's helicopter underwater escape training. And it turns out that it's a standard in uh, the oil and gas industry. When helicopters crash or make emergency landings onto the water, the helicopter can sometimes slowly descend if it has an engine failure. But when it gets onto the water, it then rolls upside down and sinks. So the training teaches you not to just panic and get out. The bizarre part is you need to wait till the helicopter sinks, rolls, now you're fully underwater upside down. Only then do they want you to try and escape. I asked, why do I have to wait? Why can't I just get out of the helicopter? They said, what happens is if you, you push the windows out, that's how you get out, through the window or the door, water then rushes in, the whole aircraft is unstabilized and it just becomes a mess of people trying to get out with water flowing in. So you walk into this facility, and there's this big metal thing above a pool and it's controllable. There's someone controlling it. You get in it and you're strapped in. Inside it looks just like a helicopter. It's got the windows and that's the simulator. An instructor standing in front of you, you've got a safety diver either side, which you hope you don't need. And now you're sitting here waiting to be basically dunked underwater. Sinking. It's a bit strange when the water's coming up. It's kind of like a horror film. The water's just rising and you're stuck there. My interior dialogue was like, I'm pretty sure I went panic. I'm pretty sure I got this, but you're not sure. So the water's coming up and it's getting to a certain point and you're sitting there thinking, do I take my breath now? Do I take my breath here? Do I take my breath here? Because you do have to take a big, deep breath of air. And it goes straight down underwater and then you swim out. So that's the easy one. Then it gets more advanced. The aircraft starts sinking and the water's coming out. Then it rolls upside down. Which completely throws any sense of balance you've got because now you're upside down underwater but everything still looks the right way up to you because you're strapped into the aircraft, you're moving with it. So now you're thinking, I think up's that way but I'm not sure. And you have to sit there and wait for this thing to fill up. So now you're underwater, sitting there with your hand on the release in the window, thinking to yourself, well, they told me to wait, so now I'm underwater upside down waiting. I was thinking at this stage, please unclip. Like, please do not jam. It unclips and that's a big relief because now you're not stuck upside down underwater, gonna drown. Push the window out and swim out. Like a, most all 60 Minutes cameramen, I've filmed in war zones, in Blackhawks, in disasters. I've flown in the back of aircraft with the door down, done all kinds of stuff like that. The training from these guys was far more intense than going into a war zone and getting potentially shot at while you're flying around. Morning, we are on our way to the Hornsby Wind Park, film crew on board. So once you're in the aircraft, you have to communicate with the pilot and the crew chief to get the shots you need. And I would ask the pilot, hey, I want to do this. Let's, let's see how close we can get to the turbine going past the front of it. You're all working together to get the helicopter that you're in in a position where I can get the shots I want. Now, do you want to follow them in from their stern and if you yeah. go nose left? Absolutely, we'll do that. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, the blades on these turbines are 100 yards tall and they're spinning. And when you get behind the turbine, there's turbulence. So these guys were wonderful, and it's, it, it's a total team game to get these pictures uh, in an aircraft. So another part of the story, 
the, the whole crew went out on a boat that they specifically used to deliver technicians to the towers. Producer Ashley Veely, the other 60 Minutes cameraman Don Lee and soundman Eric Kirshner. It was a very rough sea day that morning. It was gonna be extremely rough, right to the point where they might call it off. And the captain of the boat actually said to us, you sure you wanna do it today and not tomorrow? And we all went, oh. So it was a rough day. And one of the things we wanted to do was film with a drone. The, the problem is there's a reason why they put wind uh, turbines in this area. It's windy. So now you're trying to take a drone off the bow of a, a very small boat, fly it around a turbine in the wind, and then you've got to try and land it. And that was the sort of terrifying part. So anytime a camera person goes out and films, there's a lot of anxiety of did I get it? And you know you've got it when you, you rush back to your laptop in your hotel room, load the footage in and start scrolling through. And there's a moment hopefully where you say, got it, I got the shots I needed, this is gonna look great in the piece.